Hey everybody, and welcome back to another RCT2 review. In our last episode, we looked at Kumba by Kumba, uh, which I had called one of the most influential RCT2 ride recreations uh, because of the custom objects and the overall quality of the design. So I said we would take a look at a different recreation in our next episode, and here we are today looking at Cedar Point's Raptor by GWiz and Where's Walto. A shout out to John Paul Castro Kennedy. Uh, in the comments of the last video for guessing this one correctly. Uh, so well done there. Uh, this is a seven-year-old design. Uh, this was built for a head-to-head -head number seven, uh, which we are now two head-to-heads on from then. Uh, so this was a competition park, uh, and it is, uh, like I said, one of the strongest recreations that I can certainly remember, um, as the title implies. It is Cedar Point's Raptor. Uh, the uh, iconic B&M inverted coaster, the uh, world's first Cobra roll on invert, uh, and uh, kind of a staple on the midway there since 94. So let's take a look at the ride. Um, this is another one that's not super, super easy to recreate, uh, just kind of based on the spacing of things. Uh, if you look at the real one, the brake run here and the lift hill are sort of splayed outwards a little bit, uh, just to get all this track inside. So in order to fix that, we have a much wider pre-lift uh, little drop and climb up into the brakes here. Uh, so it just spaces it out a little bit better. But lots of great details on this one. Excellent support work. Uh, this introduced our uh, small footers, I believe. These, uh, these little guys, which are now a staple on uh, as far as coaster supports go. So here we go off of the drop and into our large loop crossing the path. Uh, nice iconic shade covers that you see at uh, a lot of the Cedar Point uh, rides. Uh, zero G roll up into that big Cobra roll. This flat section here is a nice um, basis off of the real thing. I uh, love this curve around the zero G roll drop into the mid course brake run. Um, working properly there, slowing it down. And then we have our corkscrew. And this is the hard part this real long stretch as we cross over and under. Corkscrew over top of this track. We have our helix down and then our wrap around and climb over top. So a pretty difficult little sequence to get right. And certainly from an RCT standpoint, it gets a little bit awkward going from this drop all the way over to here without it seeming too, too stretched. But I honestly think they did a pretty good job. Part of the difficulty is we've got just these small corkscrews or, or way overs, I guess, if you want to be technical. Um, but it... Um, it honestly isn't isn't too bad, I don't think, especially because of the good support work in here. Uh, we have kind of this uh, uh, pretty comprehensive uh, support package across the whole thing and done pretty realistically throughout. Um, but again, just very clean, very well put together. Um, that's sort of a signature of GWiz, and certainly from Where's Walto's perspective, he offered a lot to this, uh, this design also. Um, this was a 50-50 split uh, by the percentages. Uh, but what's cool about this one is that it actually does recreate a fair bit more of Cedar Point with uh, some of the midway and everything else. Now on head-to-head -head contest maps, you are limited as far as area goes. So uh, this cutout is, is intentional. I'm guessing if it weren't for the cutout, we probably would have seen a completed uh, blue streak perhaps and some other bits. Um, but nonetheless, we, we do have blue streak over here. Nice uh, wooden coaster here in the pretty vibrant blue. Uh, our round road uh, heading around the peninsula here. And then uh, let's take a look at some of the details on the station itself. Uh, so it's got this the nice kind of bright yellow and pink structural station. Um, the cattle pen queue here. Uh, using the quarter queue, which is uh, kind of a nice choice because it really is more in scale, even though the peeps are a full tile wide. Um, so we're not really using that. So you can see here how the peeps are coming in, kind of crossing through that, a little bit glitchy, but not too bad. And then uh, underneath this long entry queue that's covered underneath the lift hill. Um, so done pretty well at that, at that point. I love this diagonal entry here. We have our overflow queue set up on this side. Um, and then let's just get into all the other details. So we've got our sky ride here, which um, did not get completed because this lands a lot further down on the midway. So it has this nice turnaround here, a little faux station up in the uh, uh, up in the sky. So it turns around and comes on back. But these these pillars and towers are really really nice. I think those are, are done quite well. 
Uh, the station itself uh, it is just as blue in person as it looks here. That's a cool touch. Um, and then just these nice planters throughout, uh, done really well. And then the uh, the pathway details, which I kind of like. Um, so it's it's got some of that kind of different coloration here, this dark and light throughout. Um, and I would bet you, and I haven't verified it, but I'm sure if you looked on Google Maps, it's probably pretty similar to this. Um, I like these kind of brown little details here, the roof texture uh, on the ground here, splitting up some of the different areas. Um, we have some here, and then there's some of this uh, around the brick area right here as well. Uh, but architecturally, we have uh, this uh, buffet restaurant, uh, which has a really nice diagonal facade here on the front, um, a little bit obscured by the cable car, which is, is just a product of the isometric view. But uh, the cool thing is all the interiors are done, so you have the nice little buffet uh, stations all the way across. Um, I don't think this is still a buffet these days, but uh, this is seven years ago, remember? We have our, our Starbucks over here, so a nice little sign uh, on that, and then the uh, tables and little railing around here. Uh, this cool little outbuilding for tables uh, entirely on the diagonal, which uh, probably was one of the earlier ones to do kind of full building stuff like that, uh, considering seven years ago. And there's a burger spot, and uh, I really do like this games area, um, in, I mean, in person and also. Uh, here, uh, kind of got our Art Deco type detailing here with these little kind of mansard roof bits, and then a couple of these little outbuildings here with the neon um, really makes that pop, gives it some life with the flashing as well. And then the same thing here with the uh, neon kind of color chaser lights across the whole thing. Uh, but cool little games, a little detail. Also, staff members dropped inside of there, which is cool. Um, so just giving it that little extra bit of stuff. And then I like here too, you can see these ones are closed with the, the um, garage door down. Uh, so that's a nice touch as well. Here's our Johnny Rockets um, or, or whatever similar one that is. I think it's Johnny Rockets. Um, so nice detailing too on the inside. Cut off, of course, probably based on tile limit, just considering how close some of these things are cut. Um, now this one's cool. This is the old Cedar Point Casino right here. And uh, inside we've got this fantastic laser tag arena with the blue and the red um, using the maze uh, feature in here just to give it some life, give it some livelihood. A couple more games and things in here as well. These arcade games, a little redemption counter, uh, and then just some other bits and details. Um, you go outside and you have all the nice architecture, all the towers, and these big tall bay windows as well. Across the way, we've got our uh, Cedar Downs, uh, which is a pretty rare flat ride these days, sort of similar to a carousel, uh, but um, supported and uh, powered underneath uh, the uh, floor rather than up above uh, on a post. Um, and this one is a nice shoestring here. If we get rid of the um, the scenery, we can see that it's double, uh, double circle. Um, so I had done a tutorial for this one if you're interested. Uh, I'm not quite sure it's done in the same way here as... Uh, mine, but uh, certainly that was pretty mind-blowing back then. Um, a little bit, uh, I think OpenRCT was a thing then, but um, certainly not what it is today. Um, so a very nice, very nice detail on that. Then we have our turnpike cars, which is a little bit odd, perhaps using the train tracks for that, but um, I, I think because we don't have the cars moving on it, it's not a bad choice. Um, and then also just obscuring some of the weirdness like this uh, Little turnaround here in three tiles uh, versus you know whatever uh, the the four maybe but lots of little details. I love the signage on the fences. Here's a little light bar underneath uh, some of these lamp posts along the car ride. Um, love the introduction introduction of these planters as well um, and just the the kind of detail as far as that goes. Um, definitely can tell that uh, some of the Kind of finer details have been studied either on Google Street View or um, just photos and stuff. Honestly, if you're building recreations, uh, and honestly, even if you're just building realism and you want some references, Google Street View is one of the best because uh, you can find a lot of theme parks actually that have full interior shots of, of all sorts of stuff like that. Um, and then just over here, we have the, the picnic groves and uh, little details there and... Uh, that pretty much wraps us up through the whole thing. Uh, but there's there's just a lot of really kind of nice stuff. I always thought G Wiz did a very nice job at um, some of the finer details of ride infrastructure. So 
station platforms and um, the transfer tracks. So Cedar Points uh, here with Raptor is a little bit odd Then it's not one, two, three in a row. It's one and then double stacked here next to it. So uh, just a nice little feature there, paying attention to it, using the wooden coaster here as a uh, catwalk and then also using the junior coaster layered on top of it. Over here, our junior coaster for the, the little tram car uh, uh, release, uh, evacuation platform, things like that. And then just all the uh, the support work here with the diagonals and everything else, all very done, uh, very nicely done, very detailed uh, throughout the whole darn thing. Uh, so definitely a quality and highly, highly detailed recreation. Um, certainly haven't seen anything come close to uh, either of these two designs, in my opinion, as far as recreations go. Um, it's certainly tough when you do a recreation because not only are you judged on the look compared to the real thing, and often that means some sacrifices made uh, to get it into the RCT space, but you're also judged on how well it looks in the game too. So it's really that balance of make it look good in the game, make it look realistic, and then just get all those little details in. And certainly you can tell here that there's a lot of well-researched details and, um, you know, I think it, it, it definitely shows. So um, this was a winning park, by the way, for that head-to-head -head match, oh, which is not surprising. This, uh, this is one of my favorite head-to-head -head maps of all time, probably. Uh, but that is all for today. Uh, we will be back on uh, Sunday uh, with our next video here, and then we're also streaming tomorrow for uh, Park Connect. And actually today, uh, when this is going to get posted, and uh, Saturday for our CT. Uh, so until next time, uh, thank you very much for watching, and we will catch you in the next one. Bye now.